today about everyday worship. You know, we uh, just did some worship in here, uh, but I've been covering some spiritual disciplines lately. You know, things that can help us to connect with the Lord even more in our, in our lives, not only here at church, but also in our everyday life, you know, out during the week. And so we've talked about prayer, we've talked about meditating on the Word of God, and today I want to talk about putting some worship in our daily lives. You know, and I've been reading um, the biography of Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Um, I've got a picture of him here. You know, just in case somebody doesn't know who he is, he was a pastor in Germany uh, during World War II, and he actually started spying on the Third Reich to try to defeat them, and he was arrested and ultimately he was executed by them, actually just a few months before World War II ended. You know, if, he, if it had been, you know, like just a couple of months later, he would have probably been spared. Uh, but anyway, he gave up his life uh, for that. And he was also someone who helped Jews to get to freedom. Uh, but this biography was talking about how his relationship with the Lord was shaped by his mom. And the two things that his mom emphasized were reading the Word of God every single day, and then also singing hymns. The entire family was very musical, and they would get together a lot, and they would sing and play instruments together. And so they did worship all the time, you know, not just going to church. And in this biography, it also was talking about Martin Luther, who I have another picture of him here. He lived um, in 1483 to 1546. But what Martin Luther did to contribute to the spiritual life of Germany was one, that he translated the Bible into German, and so they could have it in their everyday language, right? You know, imagine if we only had Bibles in Latin. You know, it would be pretty hard on us, I think, if that's all we had, or if it was in the original language of Greek. Amen. Um, so he translated it into German so that regular people could read the Word of God. And then also he instituted congregational singing. You know, prior to that, uh, they would have, you know, special choirs. You know, only certain people were allowed to sing. They didn't have the congregation sing. And also all the songs were in Latin. So most people probably didn't even know what they were singing about even. You know, so he instituted songs in their everyday language. In fact, I think A Mighty Fortress is Our God, from what I understand, the tune was actually from like a bar tune that people would sing. You know, so he borrowed some of the regular music of the day and, and gave it some new words. You know, so I think that was a great contribution. And, you know, music has never been as available as it is now, right? You know, I remember when I was a kid, I had to wait. Like, if I had a favorite song, I would wait by the radio for it to come on. You know, or maybe you called that DJ and said, can you play this? I probably did that a few times, too. Um, you know, or you could buy an album, maybe. You know, but you can't take that album with you, can you? You know, like you're carrying around a record player all the time. I remember my parents had a gigantic um, stereo console. You know, it was like a major piece of furniture. And I think all it had really was, a, it had a radio, it had FM. Ooh, you know, because I was used to just having an AM transistor radio. It had an FM radio as well as AM and then a record player. You know, and, and we thought that was great. You know, wow, I can play what I want if I go buy an album. But now you can just go on the internet and get whatever song you want. You can play it on your phone pretty much anywhere you are. Um, I just think it's an amazing thing. And so we can really implement some worship in our lives, you know, whether you're on your way to work or you're, you know, doing housework or anything. You can uh, put some worship. And, you know, the early church actually also had worship you know this whole thing where it was only special choirs that wasn't really what god had intended right uh, the early church did sing hymns so let's look at colossians 3 16 it says let the message about christ in all its richness fill your lives teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to god with thankful hearts Amen. you know so paul was encouraging his people to make sure that they were singing songs you know, and I just think it really helps you to connect uh, with the Lord. You know, I, uh, I'm somebody who's sometimes not always in touch with my feelings. You know, I know that probably everybody's different. Some, some people, they can't hide their feelings if they even try, right? You know, uh, but I'm one of those people who sometimes I'm like, I'm fine, I'm fine. You know, and I don't know I'm actually not fine until like something physical goes wrong. And then all of a sudden I'm like, 
oh, uh, I, something's going on because I don't normally have this. <laughs> why, why am I suddenly getting migraines every day or you know, something like that? I need to probably slow down and think about what's going on in my life. You know, and so sometimes it, it's hard for me to actually have words to say to God, you know, because I just, it's just not kind of how I'm wired sometimes. But I feel like worship songs, you have the benefit of these people who are wired that way. They have written these songs, they've put them down, you know, they sing them for you. You can get songs with lyrics on YouTube, you know, so it's just a great chance for you to try to connect, you know, your heart to God uh, through worship. And so I just wanted to encourage you to put some worship into your devotional life. And let's see, we are going to take up our offerings here in just a minute. And we've got a few electronic ways that you can give. Uh, but we're also going to receive the offerings here and your prayer requests if you wrote them down. So I'm going to pray over the offerings and your prayer requests. Well, dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for everything that you do for us. And we just thank you that you've given us... Um, worship music, Lord. I'm just so grateful that there is such a, uh, such a large amount of it. You know, you can get it at any time of the day or night that you might need it. Um, I just thank you for that, Lord. And I pray, God, that you would just help us to really just connect with you on a heart level as well as our heads. And we just thank you, God, for what you do. I pray that you would take this offering, you would use it in other people's lives to bring them into your family and into your kingdom. And I pray, Lord, that you would bless each one who's giving to, Lord, that you would provide for their needs as they are sowing into your kingdom. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so Lonnie and Max are going to receive the offerings and your prayer requests. And while they're doing that, I just have a few announcements for us. Let's see, the first one is we've got our uh, Tuesday night group. So we have dinner at 5 p.m. on Tuesday. And then after that, we do our study, and we are doing What's So Amazing About Grace. Uh, Amy's been facilitating that. It's been a great study. I just feel like we have uh, great discussions, especially, especially last week. That, that was very amazing, I thought, to have, have the good discussions of some things. So I encourage you to come. You don't have to have been to the other ones, you know, if you've never been before. Um, you don't have to... You know, don't feel like you're going to not know what's going on. Each one is its own session. And so that's a great time. And then next, we've also got um, Safe Haven Psychological First Aid Training is this Saturday. And if you're planning on coming to that, we need to know because we need to RSVP uh, to the people who are holding that. And what is Safe Haven? Yes. And Safe Haven is an organization that helps the community to heal from gang violence. And we're a part of the Safe Haven Network of Churches. And so we go into areas where there's been like a gang shooting or something like that and hold an event for the community. Um, a, lot of, a lot of times we've had food, we do prayer walks, uh, different things like that. We, um, you know, and so what this is is something that if you were at something where there's been like a recent shooting and somebody was in crisis, uh, they give you some techniques that you can use to help someone kind of uh, calm down and not be in, you know, such a state of panic. And so this is really good, good training. If you're going to be a part of Safe Haven events, uh, we really recommend that you do the training. And so that's going to be this Saturday from 9 to 3 at New Beginnings uh, Ministry. And the, um, we've got flyers over here if you need the address. It's also in your bulletin. And then finally, we've got our Miracle Lunch which is a fundraiser for House of Purpose. That's going to be Saturday, November 12th at 12 p.m. And if you're planning to come to that, there is a lunch option that we need you to pick. So, um, so we'd like to have you sign up. Let me know if you want to sign up. Or um, there is a brochure, or not a brochure, but a flyer over there. You can see the website to go sign up for that. Also, if you want to volunteer to help with that, um, we need you at 10 a.m. And it's going to be at South Suburban Church in Littleton. And so those are our announcements for this week. Let me call up Pastor David. That was really good, Nancy. It made me think of, um, I have a, a music teacher uh, for guitar, and uh, I've been attending the school for a, or a while, but he, he's just absolutely the best. He's really focused. When he came in the other day, he was tr classically trained. So he's just simply amazing. So when I, I heard this music coming out of this room, well, first he said hello to me and he said, I'll be with you in a little bit. 
and he, he does things to warm up, but he can play. I mean, it was like really fast and, and just incredible. And I'm like, that's not a student there. And, and the lady at the front desk, she can look at the screen, she goes, oh, that's Ethan. And I thought, oh, what a wonderful guitar teacher I have, you know? He's so amazing. He's so amazing. He helps me, he pushes me to different levels. He's teaching me 12-part um, blues right now and things like that. So, um, you know, we need to grow, but we've got to grow in our focus. And when I think of Ethan, he's young, he's, he's focused. He's focused on what he needs to do uh, to prepare. And I appreciate that. And, you know, we can realize our purpose through overcoming distraction, through overcoming distraction. And, you know, so many dreams never come to realization because there is too much in life that takes us off track. And the dreams don't come to realization, let alone the purpose that God has for us. And have you ever had a dream that's been lying dormant? It's, it can become so buried, see, under debris. And you don't, and you don't remember it anymore until something stirs it up. And you don't know that God wants to stir some things up in your heart here today. But distractions are one of the top things that keep people, even you know, God's people from, from God's focus for their lives. Christians today, they need to be aware of and avoid distractions. They impede God's perfect will for our lives. In 1 Corinthians 7, verse 35, uh, the New Living Translation says this, I'm saying this for your, your benefit, not to place restriction on you. I want you to do whatever will help you serve the Lord best with as few distractions as possible. I know today God is going to reveal through the Holy Spirit and this Word of God some things that maybe have impeded your progress. And I know that God is for you and He wants to help you. So what has God spoken to you when it comes to serving Him? What has He spoken to you about when it comes to serving Him? What has gotten in the way or distracts you and gets you slightly off course or way off course for that matter? Distraction can be, let's define it, it can be mental turmoil. Things, there's so many things to do. There's so many things on my to-do list. There's so much that I need to accomplish. But have you ever thought about what I really need to do in this given day? Does everything else fit in with God's plan for that day? And so there's confusion and there can become a, like a muddiness of thought, can't there? And, you know, as we look at further definitions that, you know, you can say, well, this person actually drives me to distraction. And you got to break away sometimes and say, you know what, I, I, I actually need to find a place to pray. And what's interesting about the Proverbs, it says, you know, it's better to dwell in a corner of a roof than to be with a contentious person, right? And sometimes you need to get away and refocus. And it's a mental state. It's characterized by a lack of clear and orderly thought. God isn't a God of confusion, right? He's a he gets God of order. And, and, you know, we can have a confusion of impressions of things that are going on in our world, whether it's through media or, or through our phones or, or other things that, and, you know, you might want to turn the, the little buzzer thing off on your phone when every time you receive a text message, just a thought. Sometimes it's the thought that counts, right? And so, what is distracting me? I've got to be real with myself about that. The worst person I can lie to is myself, right? The worst person I can justify is to myself. They call that self-justification, don't they? But the obstacle to my attention, or inattention, or lack of attention, what is it? Can I identify it? Will I allow God to identify it in my life? 
And the obstacle to attention or lack of it, it could be entertainment that provokes and distracts me and, and gets me further into worries and cares. The Word of God tells us to cast our cares before the Lord. Why? Because He cares for us. He doesn't want us to be muddy. He doesn't want us to be distracted. He wants to lift that burden of distraction from us so that we can enter into what He has ahead for us. So, other things, other definitions. A misdirection in life. You know, the thing about music, or, uh, magicians is they try to get you to focus on something else while they perform their sleight of hand. And you know, the enemy likes to do that too in our lives. Get us off course. Sometimes he says, that's worked, worked before. Why well, can screw up the rest of the relationships in this person's life? Through this distraction, perhaps... This is something that's speaking to you today in some way. But 1 Corinthians 14, 33 says, For God is not, he's not a God of disorder. If you look at your life and you say it's a little chaotic, what is going on? You've got to ask yourself, you've got to say, self, what is distracting? Amen. What is happening in my life? So he says, he's not a, a God of disorder, but peace. He wants to give us peace. Amen. So there's a pause. And as the meetings of God's holy people, he talks about, it's interesting, in Corinthians he's talking to a church. Paul is often talking to a church. He's talking to a congregation. And he's saying, look, we need to bring this into order so that people can receive what God wants to say to them. And James 1, 1 through 16 says, this is a letter from James, the slave of God, of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm writing to 12 tribes of Jewish believers. They're scattered everywhere. Greetings. Dear brothers and sisters, when the troubles come your way, he says, brothers and sisters, you should understand this. When troubles should come your way, Consider it as an opportunity for joy. Amen. That seems a little bit odd on the surface, but you've got to consider what is going on. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow, so let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you'll be perfect and complete, uh, needing nothing. If you need wisdom, ask our God, and he will give it to you. For he will not rebuke you for asking. So he's saying, look, if you need wisdom about your life, hey, you got to take time, and you got to come to the source. If you want purpose for your life, why, you got to take the time to say what's getting in the way. So he will not rebuke you for asking, but when you ask, be sure that your faith is in God alone, that your focus is in God alone. Do not waver, for a person with divided loyalty is unsettled as the wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. People, have you ever noticed, they go from one trend to another trend. I can't keep up with all the trends, so I just dress the same way pretty much all the time. I don't have to think about what's in my closet. No, there's another black t-shirt in there, right, Max? And so we just say, hey, that leather vest is hanging on the door. And, and you know, it eliminates a little bit of that. But a lady, sometimes, you know, you got so many trends. You've got all these things you got to keep up with. And sometimes I ask Nancy, I said, so what is the latest trend? And she'll say, I don't know. It's a moving target, really. So <laughs> why, why like, worry about it? So I just kind of set my own trend, so the uh, T-shirt. But it helps me in such a way. I don't think, ladies, you want to do the same. But... Such people should, you know, it says, if you're going to be all confused, if you're tossed here and there, if you're, you're the object and the focus of your faith is not there, well, you know what? You're going to not receive anything from the Lord. How could you? Your life becomes so cluttered. It says their loyalty is divided between God and the world, so they're unstable in everything that they do. It's like wearing 
two different shoe sizes or something. Believers who are poor have something to boast about. God has honored them. Those who are rich boast that God has humbled them. They fade away like the grass and the flower. The hot sun rises and the grass withers and the little flower drops and falls. And the beauty fades away and in the same way the rich fade away in all their achievements. If we think about the season that we're in, and we think about fall, and we think about the, the trees, they're so beautiful. And you know, we can say, man, isn't that beautiful? But then winter comes, right? It's even more beautiful. And then there's a snowstorm. And then there's this, and then there's that. But what about our progress through those seasons? One thing that me and Nancy have learned in ministry is that there are seasons in ministry. And there's ways that you do things, and there's things that God wants to do. And so we have to be attentive to what God wants to do in that given time, in that given season. Sometimes we can look back so nostalgic at what happened in the past, can't we? And we can say, I know those were the good old days. But if we're really to examine them, boy, they had their own problems. They had their own distraction. I'm, I'm here to tell you, and I know you know this is true, that, you know, we can, we can, we can easily get off course and start to think about all kinds of things. I wish the summer was here. Well, I, you're saying, well, I wish it was still 100 degrees. <laughs> Sometimes you you think that way, but God wants to do something right now in your life. He wants to do something right now in my life. Let's drop down to verse 12. God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterwards, hey, they'll receive a crown of life. Don't you want the Lord to say to you, well done, good and faithful servant. The things that we've done in our world today, Amen. they're not burn up things, they're not wood, hay, and stubble, they're not things that don't last, like the weather. And remember, when you're being tempted, don't say that God is tempting. me. No, I could get distracted all by myself. The one that I need to go to is God. When I find myself in a situation and it becomes muddy and it becomes confusing and I'm not seeming to fulfill what those dreams are or those things that God has placed in my heart, no, they, they've become a little bit more buried. Like when the leaves cover the lawn and they need to be raked up, right? Or else your grass may not be so good in the summertime. Amen. Verse 14, I want to drop down to that. Temptation comes from our own desires, which entices. They, they do what? They, they pull us off course. They drag us away. And these desires give birth then to sinful actions, right? And when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. You know what? I can't even remember what my dreams are. They're so buried deep inside. I, I can't remember what God had said, or what he spoke to me. And we sung about coming back to a, a heart of worship, didn't we? See, the devil does not need to kill us. Point number two is he just needs to distract us, right? He just needs to distract us. He was defeated at the cross. But he can fill our lives with distraction. I know when I get ready and I say I'm going to go down and I'm just going to take some effort, right, to practice the guitar, to go through the motions, to even get ready to get into a state where I can really have some productive practice at what I need to do. I will think of everything else. Well, I'll do the laundry first. Well, I will do this first. Well, wait a minute. I'll take time to do this first, right? So you'll think of everything but the effort that it might take to accomplish what God wants to do in your life. Let alone get aside to pray. Have you ever noticed the most distraction comes when it's time to pray? 
Right, Nancy? Nancy's shaking her head. She knows. And, and you know, but you make over time, folks, it doesn't come overnight. You've got to put things into practice to say, hey, I am prone to distraction in a given area in my life. Hey, we all can be distracted. But we need to focus on the future, right? To avoid distraction. We've got to focus on the goal. We've got to focus on, on the thing that we're supposed to be doing. When I was an insurance agent back in the day, they taught you to make phone calls. This is how you built a successful insurance agency. But there was a thing that was called call reluctance, okay? And you would find all kinds of things to do. You would shuffle, shuffle the papers around your desk just to avoid picking up the phone. You didn't think about it that way. You didn't think about, I'm avoiding this, but you would lean in that direction. And so we can lean in a direction instead of focus on what we need to focus on. Listen to what happened in 1 Samuel 9, 20. As Samuel's talking to Saul, which was going to be the first king of Israel, Saul was concerned about some donkeys that got away. But Samuel says, and we need people in our lives to speak into our lives like God has brought you here today to speak through this peculiar man about distraction. And Samuel says, I wonder what Samuel looked like. Could have he been, you know, well, anyway, I don't want to digress. He says, and don't worry about these donkeys that are, you know, they're your concern. They were lost, uh, they were lost three days ago, and they, but they've been found. And, and I'm here to tell you that you and your family are the focus of all of Israel's hopes. For that day, Saul was the hope of Israel. He was, and, and, and for a while he served God. For a while he surfaced, he, he worshiped God. For a while he was humble in his own eyes. Later, he would get distracted by everything but seeking God. And it would change the course of his life. He couldn't wait on God. No, he says, let's offer some sacrifices of our own before we go into battle. And Samuel shows up and says, what the heck are we doing, Saul? Hmm. You've lost your focus, basically. And 1 Corinthians 7, 29 says, but let me say this, dear brothers and sisters, that the time that remains is, you see, it's very short. When we look at our world today and we look at the news and we see everything that's going on and some say, hey, we're on the brink of a nuclear war. I remember the time, you know, earlier in the Cold War when uh, Russia was involved then and there was an arms race and all those things. Man, there was enough to worry about. And boy, we look at the same things developing again, but we see things getting a lot worse. I've, I've lived through those uh, those times in life. But he says in 1 Corinthians 7, 29, but let me say this, brothers and sisters, the time, you see, it's very short to accomplish what God wants us to accomplish. So from now on, those with wives, don't just focus on your marriage. Or you might say, wives, just don't focus on the cooking channel. Actually make something. Uh, Max laughed. I, I got one laugh out of it, but anyway, we watch the cooking channel. Nothing wrong with the cooking channel, right, Nancy? Nancy loves the cooking channel. But she also produces, right? And she's a very good cook, if you've been around Nancy. And she does. Dear brothers and sisters, in Philippians 3.13, he says, no, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but he says, I focus on one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. See, Paul is saying, I, I focus on the future. There's a goal to all this. There's a method. 
there is not madness. There's, there's more than a method to my madness. Okay? It seems a little crazy. But I am focused. Amen? I am focused. So forget about looking at the past. Look forward on what lies ahead. Don't forget what you're supposed to be doing. 1 Timothy 4.13 says, Until I get there, focus on reading the scriptures to the church, encouraging believers and teaching them. Sometimes we need to focus on what God wants to do. Sometimes, folks, we got to focus on what we need to do so we can minister before we get where we're going. Amen? And we've got to develop these things in our lives that lead to a life of focus. Let's review, and then I'm going to get into some things that are really going to help, that may stir up some things that we need to be aware of that may be a distraction in our life. So as we review the points, Christians need to be aware of and avoid distractions that impede God's perfect will for our lives. And then we need to repent of the desires that maybe have led us off course and lead us have led us off course now and lead, have led us off course in the past. And we need to focus on our future with prayer and Bible reading to keep us on course. Do you know those are the very things that the enemy wants to stop in your life? Reading the Word of God and praying so that you can unload those cares and those burdens so that you can retain what he wants to say to you and what he wants you to focus on so he can rekindle that fire in your heart. I came across this. This was really good, and it was by antifaith.com. I can't say her name. I mean, that's uh, one of those alphabet names. <laughs> but she talked about some things that, that can affect you. One, is, one thing is money, she says. Doesn't mean that we should quit our jobs or not earn money, but we realize that God is more important and is far more capable of taking care of us than our, than our job, right? And then money might be the lifeblood and flow of the world, but that isn't the lifeblood of us, right? It's Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And media, we talked about media. Media can be dangerous because we get consumed in it, right? And you know, there's a repeat and rehash and and this pundit and that one's telling you the same thing. And you notice it repeats itself. And Think about how much time that can waste and how we can maybe say, hey, here's a place to pray. And everywhere there's some sort of media right in your face. The worst part is it's littered with filth. It's nothing but bad news. Don't we need some good news in our lives? I make my living off the evening news. Just give me something, something I can use. People like it when you lose. Give us dirty laundry. That was lyrics from a Don Henley song. <laughs> I mean, we, where's, your, where's our focus at today, right? Almost every commercial on TV and advertisement and the internet is trying to convince us that we're missing something. Oh, this is the answer to it all. Guys, take this pill. You'll regain your youth. Right? Ladies, this beautification treatment. Oh, it's the fountain of youth. Okay, here's one that's going to strike you as funny. Church and religion. Bye. Keep church from becoming a distraction to God. Don't be dependent upon it as your sole source. I'm waiting for Sunday morning to hear the word of God. No, we need to make sure that we're pursuing God and our beliefs about what we hear. Amen? Paul said these things that, that you see and hear in me. He says, do them. And relationships. Oh, relationships, they can be a distraction, can't they? We can allow any one of the relationships to come in and threaten what's important to us 
or more important to us than God. Well, there's another family crisis today. Shake a family tree. Guess what, folks? The nuts fall out, right? <laughs> but at some time, we've got to refocus. Amen? But relationships are very important. There's a time to focus on family. I just went to Rochester, New York and spent lots of time with family. Amen? There's a time for that. There's seasons for that. But we need to get back on track. With our relationship, our primary relationship, so we'll know what to even say when we get in the family reunion. Amen? Amen. And routine. We allow that routine part of our life to squeeze out God. Well, I don't have time for that. i got to do this. So we make sure that spending time with God is as much a part of our routine as anything else that we do. Amen? Amen. So that those dreams don't die, that the, the purpose that God has for us don't grow dim. Amen. And we work. Oh, we used to work. <laughs> now people like to receive money. <laughs> they want to get paid, right? They want to get paid, but they don't want to work. But anyway, work can be a distraction. It can be a distraction. I mean, a job. I've got to make ends meet. I, 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 you know, I'm too tired. I can't make it to Bible study. I just work too hard. I can't do that. I'm exhausted from my working. So I refresh before I go to work because I spend time with God. But Mary, in Luke 10, 42, but, but one thing is needed, Jesus says. Mary has chosen what's better. She wanted to spend time with the Lord. Her sister was worried about cleaning, right? She wanted to clean everything up. She says, why won't my sister help me, Lord? Just don't worry about her. She's spending time with me, amen? The housework will wait. In fact, what I've found in life is God multiplies my time when I put it first. Hobbies. Hobbies are a dangerous thing. They can consume a lot, if not most of our time. We've got to keep them in check. And I do that. You know, as I look at, I've got motorcycles. That's one of my hobbies. And, and they can... You know, you can get so focused on, you know, polishing and cleaning and doing all these other things, let alone maintenance. And, you know, and then riding them. That's the best part, right? But riding them, you can actually focus on God. You know, it's called wind therapy. <laughs> but, eight, you know what I'm saying, right? Desiring a blessing from God more than God. What's the focus of my prayer life? Is it the blessing? Do I take the time to thank God for what he's already done in my life? Matthew 6.33 says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all of these things will be added to you. Then it will all come into focus. That's what that scripture means. It will take on more meaning. Every aspect of of your life. Okay, here's one. Relying on your pastor. Right? Relying on your pastor, becoming dependent on your pastor, thinking that, man, I got a call, I'm in trouble all the time. Or, you know, he, I wait to Sunday morning for him to rightly divide the word of truth and I want to make sure that he's doing that but yet in my life somewhere it is lacking relying and looking towards just Sunday morning again and I've got to get by until I get there while the rest of the week is full of what? Disaster. distraction right? and distraction leads to dis what did you say? disaster Distraction can lead to disaster, that's right. 
But a lot of people fall into the habit of only giving God Sunday morning. You know what I, I the reason, there's, what's great too, is I think about, you know, the videos from the YouTube channel, they, that people are, it helps people that can't get out. And we've, we've been hearing a lot about that, Nancy, that I watched this and it meant a lot to me. Where Dorothea mentioned her mother watched it and it means a lot to her. We're not negating any of that, okay? But I want to say to you, let's focus on what we need to focus. I want to say to you in, in Buena Vista Prison, you can get focused on the, the mundane and the routine and the continuing on, next meal, this, that, the exercise time, whatever it is. And you can say, I've got a lot, you've got, you've got a lot of time on your hands. You can draw closer to God than most of us can. And I want to tell you today, brother, I want to say to you today, today is the day that you can really focus on God. You may think, how can I have a ministry in prison? How can I have a ministry behind bars? How can I do this, what you've got to do? How can I have purpose in my life when I find myself in the penitentiary? What are you talking about purpose, Pastor? I know that you will discover exactly what it is. You've got more time than all of us right now. And my friend Sean is ministering in a prison right now. He's focused on what he needs to focus on. And I want to say, Sean, continue to focus in what God is telling you to focus on. We can get wrapped up in ourselves, folks. We can be one of the distractions by, by nature. We are actually, you know, Paul said there's a war going on in my members, right? I try to please I try to seek immediate pleasure in things for myself. You know, it's more expedient. And you know, the enemy says, you know, here's something that I can tempt you with. It's worked a hundred times in your life. And it produces that immediate gratification. But on the backside of it, you know what it has? It has what he brings, condemnation. And it's really a downer. And we can seek to fulfill what ourselves in such a way that, but what we really need is God to purify our hearts. And the first step is becoming aware of ourselves and where we are at and what God would like to do. So I want to pray with you here today. Let's pray together. Just say, I will follow the Lord's purpose for my day, today, while it is still today. I want to avoid distraction. Lord, identify it in my life. Help me focus on the road that you have set my feet on. That you have set my feet on. Narrow, Narrow is the road, is the road that, leads to life. that leads to eternal life. Wide, Wide. Is, the road is the road that leads to destruction. Leads to destruction. Set my feet on set the narrow road. road. Help me to experience, me to experience your, purpose your purpose for my life. For my life. Amen. Amen.